What is up? I'm Marcelo. Welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this video, we are going over setting up your project settings, saving project settings, and importing media in DaVinci Resolve 16. So with DaVinci Resolve 16 and all its new features, it feels like a lot of people are slowly migrating over from other NLEs like Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro. And definitely for good reason, uh, DaVinci Resolve is extremely powerful and extremely capable. And even the free version uh, is still capable of some things that you can't find in other programs. So it felt like a good time just to go over some of the basics of setting up a new project and importing your media. Um, the first screen you'll see in DaVinci Resolve is this project manager right here. And this is simply where DaVinci Resolve keeps all your projects that you've worked on and where you can open a new project. And you'll see it already has a project template here for us to choose the untitled project. And it also has this new project button down here that you can also click and title your new project like project tutorial. And you can hit create. And it'll create a saved file and it'll go from there and auto save and everything but if you just want to tinker around like sometimes i just want to load in some footage and see how far i can push the colors um, or maybe play with them in an edit uh, without saving any data and there you can just hit the untitled project button and it'll just open up uh, kind of like an unsaved project so um, if you're really just messing around and you don't intend on saving anything then that's a really quick way just to get right into davinci resolve uh, and from here, we can go set up our project. And here we'll go to File in the top left and then Project Settings. And then we can see here that by default, it's got it set up for a 1080 project at 24 frames a second here in the timeline format. And the timeline format is pretty much your project format, um, the same settings you'll want to export with. Uh, so let's say if I'm working with 4K footage and I want to export in 4K, I can come here to the timeline resolution and come down, you can see we have several options. Um, I have a little more options than the free version because I have the full studio version, uh, but I'll just go here to the UHD 2160, and then I can come down here, and I personally usually export in 29.9. So I'm gonna come down here in timeline frame rate and go to 29.9, and then I'll change the playback to 29.9 as well. Uh, and it has the option to change the playback frame rate in case um, you want to play back in your preview window that you'll see here eventually if you want that to play back at a different speed then your timeline is actually going to be at for one reason or another and from there right under video monitoring you will see optimized media and render cache which can be very important uh, because while DaVinci Resolve is very powerful and in my opinion a little more capable than the other NLEs out there it can be pretty harsh on your computer and by generating optimized media or by using proxies, you can lighten up the load. Um, and so what I personally usually do is you have the option here in Optimized Media to choose a lower resolution. So if I'm working with 4K footage and I want to create optimized media that's at half that resolution, um, like 2K or even go even a quarter resolution, which would be more like HD, um, then that can definitely be an option. But I usually use that, uh, leave that at original. And from there, I go down to Optimized Media Format. And uh, let's say the GH5 that I'm using now, uh, the GH5's 10-bit MP4s can be very harsh with DaVinci Resolve. So just by converting those uh, MP4s to DNHR HQX, which would still be 10-bit, I can lighten up the load on the computer because DaVinci Resolve will have a much easier time reading the DNHR files. Uh, the DNHR files will be quite big, so make sure you have um, some space on your computer when making optimized media, or you can choose down here where in under uh, working folders, sorry, where the uh, files will be stored. So you can have your files stored on a separate drive. As you can see here, I have a couple drives and I can use uh, my secondary drive or one that has more space to cache those files. And I can come down and click save and it'll give me these project settings for this project. Now let's go back to project settings really fast and file and project settings uh, because there is a way you can save these project settings for future use. You can come over here to presets and you can see I already have a couple saved here and all you need to do is go to save as and you can set up let's say a 4k 60 
uh, 10 bit. You know, even though this is 4K 29.9, um, if I wanted this to be that, I could just click OK and it would make a new save setting. That way, anytime I open project settings, I can simply come to presets, go to one of these settings like the 10 bit, 30p, and load. And here, if I go over to master settings, you'll see that all these settings have changed. Even the optimized media has changed to half um, because that's how I had it saved at this time. And you can also easily set up a default configuration that DaVinci Resolve will just pull up every time you open the program. So let's say this 29.9 10-bit is my favorite project setting. It's the one I use 90% of the time. I can just right-click this and then go to Save as User Default Config. Now, if I hit Cancel and I close DaVinci Resolve and reopen it, Now with a brand new project open, I can go to File, Project Settings, and it's already got the same project settings that we had just saved. Uh, and now every time I open DaVinci Resolve, it'll open with this 4K, 29.9, 10-bit, uh, and even in the half resolution of optimized media and the optimized media format. Very cool. Now we can go on to import some media. And here in the media tab, you can easily just import media down to the clips pool or preview clips that you might want to drag into your project. And on the left, we have our computer drives where we can simply go through, search through our files for whatever media we're looking for. Um, and here I'm gonna go to my video folder, projects, and I'll find a clip here. And I can easily just click this and it'll open the preview window. I can monitor the sound and uh, the visuals, no problem. And I can also drag this down to the media pool. Now, when I drag this down, it'll ask me if I want to change my project settings to the settings of the clip. And of course, we don't want to do that, but sometimes you might. You might have a clip that you drag in and you want your project to, the whole project to mimic the settings of a certain clip. Um, and in that case, you would click change, but in my situation, I do not. So I'm going to click don't change. And I'll just add this clip right here to our media pool. Now, when we come over to the edit tab, we can see on the left hand side in our media pool that we have our clips here to use. And this goes the same for audio or any pictures that you have. And from there, you can just drag that in to the timeline and it'll make a new timeline for you. Or if I click Control Z, click on this clip to preview, I can search through this clip for just the portion of the clip I want and make in and out markers. So I can hit I to make an in marker and then come down some ways and hit O to make an out marker. Now I can choose from this preview window to either drag in just the video, or as you saw before, I can drag in just the audio as well, and it'll make a new timeline. Or I can right click, let me control Z, or I can right click just the media itself in the media pool now that I have those markers made and click create new timeline using clip. Then it'll give me the option to name the clip. So I'll name this downtown Nashville and hit create. And from there, we'll have a new timeline with our media in it. And over here on the right, we can click the metadata to kind of see what our clip is, the properties of our clip, like the frame rate or the resolution. And over here in the inspector, we kind of have our normal options like the zoom options. We also have keyframing over here on the side as far as a reset button for each uh, property here. So we have transform with positioning. Um, we can rotate. We've got anchor positioning, pitch and yaw for any kind of distorting uh, or manipulating you want to do. Um, and we have cropping stabilization, uh, we have retiming, you can choose whether to, to pick between these different retiming modes, and lens correction, which the free version does not have, I believe. Um, the tab is there, but you cannot use it. And uh, this is just in the studio version, which I do not need on this clip. Um, but all that's right there in the inspector, as well as audio um, properties, which is really cool. I mean, the program makes it so simple because it gives you all these properties right off the bat. And I can go through here and even make little EQ adjustments. Um, you know, if I have a certain frequency that I'm not liking, I can go down here and easily just cut that out. And I can also mess with the pitch 
and the pan and the volume with keyframes and reset buttons. So that's gonna be it, guys. I'm gonna take this even further in future videos with, of course, color management and deep diving into the audio, the fusion tabs, the color tabs, and the overall interface. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about DaVinci. And if you're just getting started, I hope this kind of kick-started you and helped you uh, figure out how to get your first project started. And if it did help you, make sure to click that like button down there. And if it didn't, make sure to click the like button anyway. I mean, who knows? Maybe a future video will help you out in um, your endeavors. But as always, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comment section down below and make sure to subscribe. And of course, I'm Marcel and this has been The Modern Filmmaker and I'll see y'all next time. Peace.